Now we have gotten lucky. There are plenty of chads like Titans of CNC that have been just absolutely knocking it out of the park with just grade A parts. The whole crew over there are just absolute masters of their craft and it shows through in the parts that they've delivered. They've genuinely been one of the best partners we could have asked for as far as uh, help on the AK-50 project. And as a bonus, they're also based out of Texas. You hear a lot, a lot about like three axis, four axis, maybe if you're getting crazy five axis, nine axis is like, that doesn't even compute in my head. That makes me want to cry. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What's up everyone, this is Tyson at Titans of CNC. Today I wanted to go over a pretty cool tool path that I did a while back on the AK-50 bolt. Now I know some of you are thinking that we've shown the AK-50 parts a bunch of times where we have a bunch of videos on it. Started on our AK-50 project. For the AK-50 project, we're back with another AK-50 part. Where AK-50? But I never really talked too much about programming the AK-50 bolt. So today I wanted to go in depth on one of the tool paths in this part, which is the unified guide pass. I use this pass multiple times on the bolt. And this is the pass that I use to go around the front post of this part. It's a multi-axis pass that uses the B axis of the spindle to move the tool at different angles while also using the chuck to turn the part along with the tool. By using both of those, it swings itself around the entirety of that post. It's a pretty cool path. I run this pass multiple times in the part. The very first time I run it, I use a quarter inch in mill to get rid of some of the excess material and just go as deep as it can go. But because of the small radiuses on the part, I come back in later with smaller ball nose in mills to finish the job. But knowing how that pass worked after I programmed it with the quarter inch tool, I was able to apply that to the ball mill. So it was basically the same pass, it just had more passes because of the smaller tool. So let's start getting into it. I've got the bolt opened right now in Mastercam 2024. All I'm gonna do is just this pass. So I'm gonna go into the milling section and under the multi-axis menu, I'm gonna click on unified toolpath. That brings up our list of tools and I'm gonna select our quarter inch bull nose and mill. I'm not gonna worry about any of the speeds and feeds because this is an example. Normally I'd try to put whatever holder I'm using just to make sure it's accurate and I'm not gonna be hitting anything, but because this is just an example on how I did it, we're just gonna use a default with a long stick out. And then I'm gonna go to my setup tab. It's a multi-axis path, so I can just leave the top tool plane selected. Otherwise you can find a tool plane that has a Z axis or whatever you'd like closer to the part you're machining, but I'm just gonna leave it at top, make sure that upper left is selected and maintain spindle origin is checked. And then we're gonna get right into it by going to our cut pattern. For this toolpath, I'm gonna select add curve row and that puts a curve in our pattern menu here. With that curve selection highlighted, I'm gonna click this cursor here to select where our curves are. We're gonna go to the front of the part, make sure that I'm under solid mode for chaining and I wanna select edges. And for this toolpath, I'm gonna to select the bottom of the fillet radius here. I'm sure there's other ways to select your curve for this kind of part, but for this example, I'm just gonna select the bottom and I'm gonna hit next. And keep clicking next here until it goes all the way around this post and just on the bottom of that fillet radius. Once it reaches the edge there, I'm just double check that we have our chain that I want all the way around the bottom of the part and I'll hit OK. Next up, I'm gonna click on machining geometries and we'll select that. And for the machining geometries, we're gonna select basically the shaft of the part here. Now I wanna do that because basically for this tool, I'm trying to remove any material that was left in this corner and trying to go as close to this post as I can. So that's the surface that the tool is touching. We'll select OK there. And then for area, and this is important because you can see how, how much of the part I've selected here. For the area, I'm gonna determine it by the number of cuts. If I leave it on entire machining area, it's gonna try to machine this entire surface. When you're first coming up with this toolpath, it might be a good idea to let it, you know, 
try to see what that does because then you can play around with some of the settings, change your start position. You can see how many cuts you might need for this, but it also takes time for it to generate. So depending on how big your part is, it might take a while for it to calculate all those passes, especially if you're using a small step over. For this part, I started with a big step over to see what kind of area that it was going to machine. And then I saw that I wanted to only do a certain amount of cuts just to keep it in the area that I wanted to cut. So I did determined by a number of cuts. The amount of cuts I did was about seven. For the cutting method, I changed it from zigzag to one way. Now, if I did zigzag, basically the tool, it would start on this end follow my chain all the way around the part. And then when it reaches the other side, it step over and go back around the other way. What I used was one way, which is only gonna go in one direction. So it's gonna swing all the way around the part. And then when it reaches the end, because of the settings I'm gonna use later on, it's gonna swing around the front of the part and then just start the next pass. It's gonna constantly go in a circular motion around the front of the part. For this part with the bull nose end mill, I did a big step over of about 20,000. When I changed this tool path for the ball nose end mills, then I was ball tracking. It was more of a finer finishing pass. I changed that to like your 5,000 step over, which is a lot more passes. The only other thing in the cut pattern section that I messed with was under machining geometries, advanced parameters. I changed it from tool center mode to contact mode. And actually, if you were to hit OK without changing this calculation type, Mastercam would give you a warning saying that you can only use tool center mode with a ball nose tool. So that's why it'll actually ask you if you want to change it automatically to contact mode. But for this video, I'm just changing it right now. Now let's take a look at our tool axis control settings. Under our output format, we're set to five axis. I'm going to leave all of these settings alone. This is what popped up and what worked but it's under surface with tilt. For our side tilt definition, it's set to ortho to cut direction at each position and set side tilt by angle. For this particular tool path, I didn't have to mess too much with any of the settings here. Sometimes, especially with the ball mills, the smaller ball mills and the holders that I had, I had to set some limits here to make sure that I wasn't gonna hit anything when I tilted. But the one thing I did have to do for this tool was under run tool down here, it's set to automatic. And I changed that to at user given point. And what this does is it makes a little offset to this tool. If I leave it at zero, the tool is basically right up against the corner radius and it's trying to do a few extra vertical passes along the top of the part. So I gave it a little bit of a side shift. I played around with it a few times and found 50 thousandths was a good number and that gets rid of those vertical passes and gives me my seven passes that I wanted along the surface of the part. That's all I had to do with the tool axis settings. So next up is collision control, the fun part. So for this one, I made sure that flute was checked for the number one collision control. And for the strategy, I told it to retract tool. And instead of a long tool axis, I selected a long opt in XZ plane. And then for the geometry for the avoidance, instead of using machining geometries, I selected avoidance geometries. And what I selected were all the walls of this part along with the fillet radius to make sure that this toolpath doesn't go into this post. Bear with my rotation here. Select all the walls around and make sure it's all yellow. The only one I'm not selecting is the very front of the part. So basically that's all the walls along the curve that I selected earlier when I made that chain. I'll hit okay. And you can see our machining surface in green. We have our avoidance in red. I don't have any stock to leave there because I just want it to make sure that it's not gonna hit that wall. So that's set at zero. And I do turn on the second one. And once again, I select flute only. And for this one, under strategy and parameters, I say retract tool again. And this time it's just along the tool axis. For this one, it's set just for machining geometries instead of a selection. Finally, we have our linking tab for the tool path. And for this one, for entry and exit, for the first entry, I put in use a lead in. 
If I don't do that, then the toolpath is going to want to start on the very edge, basically of where my chain started. Now I could kick out the entry a little bit to make it start further out, but instead I just added in a lead in so it starts in a little bit farther in the front of the part. Now the second section, the default links, you know what, I'm going to generate the toolpath just so you can see how much this affects it. So here's our toolpath right now. And I didn't set the lead in yet, so we're all over the place on the front. But we're swinging around the post, and you can see when it reaches the end, it pulls off, goes above the post, and comes back down. So we have this big triangle basically in the front of the part because this is the start, goes around, comes back out, goes around the top, comes down. Now, I wanted it to go around the front of the part just in a constant circular motion. So to fix that, that's what this default link setting is. Instead of using a direct setting for the small gaps, I said blend the spline and also use my lead settings. For the large gaps, I don't think it affected anything and I'll show you why in a second. But for that one, I said to retract to the clearance distance. Now the reason is under small gap size, I set that as a value and I put one inch for the small gaps. And now watch what happens. So now we have a motion in the front of the part that goes around. Now this is all jacked up right in the front here and we're about to fix that in a second because my lead in settings aren't quite right yet. But now it's not doing all those retracts where it wants to pull off the part, go around the top of it and come back down. So back to our programming. I'm gonna set a clearance area. Instead of plane, I'm gonna say cylinder and the axis we're gonna use, I'm gonna use the X axis for the direction and a user defined point for what, where it's going through. And I'm gonna select the center of my zero plane here. And then for radius, I'm gonna say 1.5, which I believe is about the size of our material. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put a three inch cylinder and set that as our clearance area. And finally, for our lead ins and lead outs, I'm gonna fix our lead in that we had earlier. And I'm gonna say, instead of a tangential arc, I want a vertical tangential arc at a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna set that both for the lead in and the lead out. For the first entry lead in, I wanna make sure that's also set to use the default lead in, which I just set. So with that, we'll hit okay. And you can see what a difference that made. Now we're coming down and starting at the very front of the part. And we have our nice circular motion and it comes up, lifts up a little bit, but swings around the front of the part and then starts the next pass, just going in a constant circle. I'll generate it here so you can see, just like that. And again, when I program this on the bolt, this was just to get rid of some of that material that I had left behind from my 3D pass from earlier. But then I come in a little bit later after I finish the walls of this part, but I use a very similar pass using a very small ball mill. And it's basically the same thing. I just had to watch some of the tilt angles, just step over so it was a small tool, but same exact pass going around the part. But this time with the smaller ball mill, it was going all the way into the corner radius of the part. One other thing I'd like to point out is because I set the clearance area as a cylinder and set my diameter to where it was, you can see my initial lead in and lead out of the part, this one right here and this one right here. You can see the start of my cut and the end of my cut, these two lines over here. Because I set those numbers there to the where my material was, I didn't have to worry too much about it starting in a weird position or coming way off the part. It was set to what my material size is and then starts feeding in instead of wrapping really close to the material. So that's pretty much it. It was going over just a simple nine axis program on the multi-axis. I know there's a lot of different ways you can program this part and this is kind of a simple tool path, just big in mill going around the front of the part. But there's a lot of people out there who just jumped into the nine axis and don't really know where to start because there's a lot of menus to go through. There's a lot of axes to worry about. There's just a lot of things to look out for when you're making these kinds of passes. And maybe by having a tutorial like this, you can dip your toes into programming a big machine like the nine axis and 
play around with some numbers and find something that works so you have a toolpath that you're happy with. I'd also like to say, make sure you check out our website, CNC Expert. There's a lot of you on it, so you know it's a cool place to show off your parts, put up the work that you've done, show cool parts you've machined, and also have a place where you can display all your work proudly. So say if you have a job interview or something, you can show off the parts you've made and show how good you are as a machinist. Or if you're just starting out into this trade, you can show everyone your accomplishments, you know, going through the building block series or the rocket kit or whatever cool stuff you've made. We basically have a Facebook now for machinists where you can put whatever you want and everyone will see it. So make sure you check that out. So thank you very much for watching. I got plenty more videos like this where I'll go over different kinds of toolpaths and master cams. So make sure you stay tuned, like this video, subscribe to our channel. If you haven't, it really helps us out and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.